Ooh, all right, everybody, welcome back to round two. We'll see how this one goes. So this is our second stream because the first stream, uh, we lost electricity, so it's kind of hard to do that if you don't have internet service. So let's just jump right in again to the same thing we were talking about this morning. So there was a question that uh, was pretty well from Trad6166, which asked, look, if there's a, everything goes along with the four-year cycle, how does everything get affected, especially with this upcoming or pending recession? And again, we talked about this, but it is worth to note that this is from actually Valuetainment. They did a great uh, video on uh, the prospects of a incoming recession. And it, it's, it's amazing to me because like everybody in the crypto space, it seems like we're all pretty much saying that yes, it's gonna happen. But we take a look at uh, some sources from the New York Fed and we take a look at the Fed staff. They're like, no, there's no recession that's going to happen. The yield curves say yes, 61%. Economists are 50-50. Consumers, that's us. We're pretty sure it's gonna happen, about 69%. The banks, Goldman Sachs, Bank of America, are like, no, it's not going to happen. Of course, the CEOs are pretty high, 84%. Why? Probably because they have some insider information that we are not privy to. Imagine that, a CEO knowing what's going on with their company. And of course, we take a look at the yield curve itself. A yield curve is supposed to look like this. These are treasuries, these are notes, these are bonds, and depending on the, the length, this is how it's usually been for well, forever. You've got a, a one month treasury yield curve at uh, 0.15. This is back in 2009. If you went uh, three months, you get a whopping 0 0.18, 0 0.28, and then on. Unless you go like for the high ones, 30 years is 4.38%. That's what usually would happen. And this is how it's supposed to look as time goes, as just along a time on a continuum. But of course, when we start to get into recession, then people have insider information. Uh, big people, CEOs, uh, institutions, uh, anybody who has this insider information starts to figure out like, hey, there's a lot of things going on. I'm going to take my money out of the stock market, out of the risky equities, put it into something safe. And then when they start to do that, then of course, there's a big run and we get an inversion because people are loading up on 30 years at 3.84% or whatever actually it is today, a 20 year at 5%. That's crazy. That is essentially risk-free money from the US government. That's what it's supposed to look like. So again, when they were talking about here, what they said, they have the yield curve at 61%. Every time we have, we invert the yield or the yield curve, there's an inversion. And then it uninverts, and then we get into a recession. This has happened every single time, except for once. And this has happened in the 70s, this happened in 79, the yield uh, uninverts inverts, uninverts, and we get in this little gray area. That's a recession. Again, happened again in 81, the Volcker days. Inverts, uninverts, we get a recession. Then over here, happened in 89. It's uh, inverts, uninverts, and we get a recession. Come over here to the 2000s.com era. Inverts, uninverts, recession. Then you get to see it happens again and again, and it's going to happen again because we have inverted, and now we are on the uninversion. We haven't really made it to that point. The only time this hasn't happened again was back in the 60s. So congratulations, people from the 60s. Uh, you dodged a bullet for this one time, but you couldn't do it the second time back in 69 and the 70, of course, when the rates were a little bit crazy. So that just gives us context into what's happening. So what I did was I took a look at, well, how would that look as far as like when we have uh, um, a dip? or when we have a pause and a pivot to a recession and how long that takes and what would that look like if we actually have a recession, which I believe we are gonna have a recession, into the Bitcoin halving. I thought it was gonna be Q1 of 2024. Looks like I am incorrect. So uh, I recorded, I pre-recorded this video because when I tried to do it uh, just live, it was in like 30 minutes. This one I've uh, knocked it down to under 13 minutes. So let's just take a listen and then we'll come back and I'll do a Q&A because I'm sure we're going to have quite a bit of questions. So let's just take a listen. Macro environment continues to deteriorate. The question we have to ask ourselves is, what does this mean for potentially a recession, whether it be a hard landing or a soft landing? And how does that correspond as we move into the four-year cycle and into the next Bitcoin halving, which should be in April 2024 and beyond that? So to help give us a little bit of a context about what's going on, there was a great interview uh, this is uh, Jeremy Siegel. He's a professor at Wharton School of Business. And what he's going to talk about is the question was bonds or stocks and assets for the long term? Because when he, we talk about this, I would assume he'd be talking about bonds and how great they are. But what he says was pretty surprising. Just take a listen. Becky, stocks in the long run, and I've done all that long run data, are 
excellent long-term hedges. You're planning a 10-year portfolio, a 15, 20-year retirement portfolio. Stocks do beautifully against inflation. Bonds do not. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, yes, I think inflation is going down right now, but when we right. look ahead at the deficits and all the rest, could there be another inflationary episode? And then what do I want to hold? Do I want to hold real assets or do I want to hold paper assets? Exactly. Do I want to hold paper assets or do I want to hold real assets? When he's talking about equities, he's saying those are essentially real assets. Now, here on the channel, I'm a little bit biased. I would uh, think that uh, Bitcoin would be more of a real asset as far as crypto digital assets. But, of course, that's just me talking with my biases. Now, the next piece, it's only about a minute long. The question gets asked, well, what about this upcoming recession? How would you play this? Because wouldn't it be safer to do a little bit or get out of equities and those assets because they're a riskier play? And... What he says makes a ton of sense for me, maybe for you. So just take a listen. Uh, if we have a recession, yeah, I think stock prices will go down. But one thing has always been true. They go down too much in recessions. Um, mm -hmm. And they prove to be unbelievable buying out, uh, opportunities. People get really scared. And then once that, and listen, we've gotten out of every recession the last 200 years. We'll get out of the next one. And then we see soaring. You're planning a 10-year portfolio? I wouldn't worry about a recession. If you're a timer and you think there's going to be a recession, yeah, I'd wait. But you have to decide what what, what are you going to play that game or not? You know how hard it is to play that game. Professor Siegel is definitely speaking my language. You know how hard it is to time all those things. No, some people think that they can, they can do it, and that's fine. Uh, but you know, moving forward, you know, what do you really want to hold on to? You want to hold on to the paper, or you want to hold on to assets? And I don't think there's any there's a harder asset out there than bitcoins. So that leaves us to the next question, which would take a look at what trad 6166 asked and uh trad asked a very good question he said it looks like we will be in a recession next year no way the four-year cycle will be of any significance and it might just discourage prevent people from investing in crypto next year then we got to wait eight years for another bull market which is anywhere close to the last crypto would die if that happens and to answer this question i had to do a real deep dive into things and we want to take a look at of course not just the yield curve and of course the pivot but also the pauses and how long it takes from a pause of the Fed rate to a recession, to the pivot to a recession, and everything in between. So we're going to take a look at four different time periods from the uh, early 90s all the way into present and take a look at these things. Now, before we get into that, I want to thank uh, today's sponsor, which would be Masterworks. And really, it just comes down to a portfolio balance. Now, if you don't know Masterworks, it is investing in the fractionalized shares of art pieces. Now, I, us as mere mortals, we can't buy a brown painting for $4.6 million, but we can buy fractionalized shares of this piece. And of course, it is registered with the SEC because they are securities. Now, me personally, again, about balancing a portfolio, this is mine in 2023, roughly 30% or a third is into crypto. I have stuff in IRA, also some stocks, a bunch of cash, stables, DGEN plays, and only 1% is in Masterworks because I believe that art could be a great balance. And of course, 30 and 10% into real estate and to land. So what I've done personally, this is back in 2021, I purchased a Banksy in a basket, not the whole thing. I'm not a baller like that would be crazy. And I thought about it this way back then. So I wanted to diversify. Why was it? Because it outpaced the S&P 500 as far as art goes for, by 131% from 95 to 2021. It showed less correlation to other markets. I think that's pretty good. And it's demonstrated being a store of wealth during inflationary periods. And before you laugh, think about this. How did your portfolio do in 2022 as far as crypto? Well, I can tell you right now for art pieces, uh, one from Andy Warhol sold for 195 million. Paul Allen for his collection sold for 1.5 billion. And then Christie's, the one that does all the different offerings and sales, sold 8.4 billion. And it was a record year for the art market in probably one of the worst years that we've had in quite some time. Why is that? It's because people who love art want to invest into art and they want to own it. Here's the story. This is the, one of the Banksy paintings. It was shredded and the original price was 1.4 million for just the base painting or just the base artwork. Well, after it was shredded, then people wanted it more. They FOMO'd in and it was sold for 25.4 million. Don't have me explain it. That's the art world. So here's the track record for Masterworks. Over the last uh, three to 10 years, they've exited over 11 artworks. Now it's actually uh, 16. Collection has grown to over 225 paintings and here's the year over year annualized results. 32%, 39% all the way to 35%. And then actually they just sent me this yesterday. 
their paintings of uh, Alea was uh, 325% annualized. Warhol 4.1, 17.6, 77.3, and so on and so forth. So I know this works. I've personally invested into it. And also somebody who uh, is also a listener, a subscriber to Digital Asset News wrote me uh, an email and said, yeah, I actually invested in, in 2021, it was sold in late 2022, and there was a 70% gain, annualized of 35%. So yes, it actually does work. So does that mean that you will get 70% or 35% annualized returns? No, it does not. This is an investment. Every investment carries a certain degree of risk. And of course, past performance does not equate to future gains. Now, just so you know, Asset Center Management right now, they have 344 artworks, close to a billion dollars or 882 million and 811,000 members. Again, it's registered with the SEC. So because it is a security and you can read all the filings there. If you are interested in this, there's a link in the description. It looks just like this. You'll put your information in as far as uh, the email and someone will call you and talk to you about if this is something for you. I have to say that this is not for everybody, but this is just what I've done. And maybe it could be something for you now. Let's take a look at those pieces. So we're gonna take a look at these four different timeframes for the actual recessions. And the first thing I, I was kind of astounded by was, of course, we're taking a look at the federal funds target, right? I'm not a TA person, but it just looks like we just are uh, performing lower highs. And uh, you can see all the way back into uh, almost to before 1980 in the Volcker days, you know, we had a pretty high federal funds target rate. And then of course in the 90s went down a little bit, but it was quite a pump all the way into 2020. Of course, now we've reversed that and now we are uh, on that train of uh, massive Fed funds rate hikes. So the question then is for the very first one back in the 1990s, how much time between the time that we paused as they were increasing those federal funds rate when they paused or stopped raising the rates to a recession, not a pivot, just the time they paused. It took one year and four months. They paused on February 29, and then the recession started in 30th of June, 1990. So that was a pause to a recession. Next question is, what about a pivot to a recession? Pivot to a recession for the 1990 or 89 when it started, it was a year. So you had roughly a year and four months, and it took a year from the time it actually pivoted. And from that time, from the pivot to a recession was 30th of June, 1990. And then the market, this blue line right here, is the S&P 500. And from that time point in 1990 of June, to 11th of October, 1990, that was the bottom of the S&P 500, the stock market. The recession still went on for another five months. So I need you to remember this. It took roughly eight and a half, nine months or so for the total recession of this time period. And what it means is, is that the market will recover faster than the actual economy. And that's an important factor when we start to take a look at the four year cycles. Next one, and the second piece in the late 2000s, the dot-com uh, era, we can see that uh, from the time that we had a pause to recession, again, the federal funds rate, they paused it, they didn't raise anything. It took 10 months, quite a bit of time. And then when they pivoted to a recession, it took only two months. Again, two months from the beginning of the recession, the recession of the market bottom was six months. And then the market recovered pretty well, matter of fact. And then the recession was over in two months later. So again, the market, the stock market, recovers first and then the actual economy recovers. How about this one? This was uh, back in uh, the Great Recession. Now this one took quite a long time. The pause to a recession was 18 months. That's a long time from when they stopped raising rates and they just paused to when the actual recession is. So we had 18 months, 10 months, and a year and four months, somewhere around there, between a pause to a recession for the last three uh, data pieces that we took a look at. Now. From a pivot in this time frame to a recession, it was very fast. Uh, we are talking about two and a half months, very quickly, and the bottom dropped out. And this was a brutal one. The recession to the market bottom took 15 months, but as bad as this was, the economy still took three more months to recover, even though the market recovered first. So you had 15 months, some months before, and now here we are at three months, and of course it went up and everything was looking pretty good for quite some time. Also during this time frame, I want you to note that we had the time frame of low to no rates and we had an economic surplus and it was quite a great time and it was quite a boom for the economy. And we're gonna see that again in this point. And the last one, of course, was the uh, cervasis sickness. 
And of course, from the time from the pause to a recession, quite a long time, one year and one month. That's a big chunk of time. And from there, from a pivot to a recession, didn't take too long, six months. So we had a year and a month, we had 10 months, we had 18 months. It's quite a bit of time between a pause to a recession. But if you average those out, we can say about a year, year and two months and some change, somewhere around there. But for this piece, from a pivot to a recession, it took six months, recession of the market bottom only a month, and then to actually recover because the money printer went on like crazy. Uh, it took less than a month, and then we were off the races. And again, we had rates extremely low for quite some time until we hit into our latest period, which is, of course, right here. So now that we can see that, we are at that point where we have actually the last rate hike was in July 26. And in September, when they came back, there was a pause. And we are paused all the way up until this is the middle of October when I'm recording this video of 2023. So that would mean we would get back to the original question from Trad. Looks like we'll be in a recession next year. No way the fire, four-year cycle will be any significance. It's gonna take eight full, full years. We'll just wait because let's take a look at that. Let's take a look at the data. So we are right now in October. So we paused again. We paused this time frame around 27 July. That was the first point. Of course, there was no uh, FOMC meeting on August. So September will be the pause. So let's just take July for this time frame and say, okay, so a pause to a recession like we talked about could be a year and four months, could be 10 months, could be 18 months, like we just took a look at. Let's just keep the round numbers to say a year. Might be a little bit less, might be a little bit more. Let's just say a year. So from July 2023 to July 2024, that is a time when we are on our way to a recession. And let's just say that July or August or so of 2024, the recession would start. And I want you to notice one thing, that in 2024, before we hit a recession, because I personally think we're going to hit a recession in Q1, but the data says that we could be somewhere else. If that's the case, then we won't have a recession and we'll have a Bitcoin halving in April, sometime middle of April of 2024, and then we'll hit a recession. We've never had this before. Is this a bad thing? Is this awful? No, it's a natural cycle. But let's just say that we get a recession in end of July, early August. How long does a recession usually last? Well, we've shown this quite some times of Statista. The average recession will last 10 months. That's going from 2020, taking a look also at the 80s, the 90s, 2001s, the 50s, the 40s, and of course the long one, the Great Recession, 18 months. But even recently, 2001, it was eight months. 1991 was eight months. Let's just say 10 months. So that would take us from a July or August 2024 recession to where we go all the way through, the recession would be potentially done again, just using numbers, to May of 2025. And in 2025, if we take a look at the four-year cycles, what does that mean? Well, we're in the reset year right now in 2023. 2024 is a halving. And so far, after every halving, we've had a massive all-time high, and then a monstrous dip and a reset, followed by another halving. So that is what answer Trad 6166 question. But there is one more caveat, which is this. I still think we'll have more time. And why is that? It's because, just like we talked about, even though we're in recession, the economy is not the market, and the market is not the economy. There are two different entities. So we take a look at the first one. Again, the recession in the market bottom, it was three and a half months, even though, the, even though the recession lasted totally for eight months. Same thing in the second part in the early 2000s. It was six months, and then the market recovered, took some, all, not some all-time highs, but did pretty well. And it was two months till the recession ended. Then again, in the Great Recession, and we see just how massive this was, it took 15 months, quite a long time, but then it took three more months for the economy to recover. And I'm hoping we'll see what actually happens as we move into the next one. So that hopefully would answer the question. I personally believe that there is a recession coming. I don't know if it's a hard landing, I don't know if it's a soft landing, but uh, just like Professor Siegel talked about, it's all about where you want to be. And do you want to be in paper? Do you want to be in hard assets? Or do you want to time everything? And that's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. 
Yeah, everything we talk about is time sensitive. So that would take care of the little piece that we just talked about. So yeah, I had to uh, pre-record that one because there was so much data and I wanted to make sure that the editing was done right, that uh, I didn't want to you know, blow it and uh, go over 30 minutes like when I was practicing. So hopefully that uh, took a lot less time. But that's it for the video section. If you liked today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all the good stuff. Now.